Think about it as compound interest. How long is it going to take for you to double your net value? Now suddenly you're taking something that's very high level to say, if I make myself 1% better, maybe it's not every single day, maybe it's every single month. That's a simple math problem to say, if I do something and I work on 1% of me every single month, it's going to take me three years and I'm going to be twice as good as I am today. And the other thing that I would say is, from a product standpoint, this is a, a piece to think about is, you might have 60 different ways you can get you can do that. You can't use 60 things at once. It's just not feasible. So how do you offer a product that uses that 1% or 5% or whatever mentality of compound interest and continues to make yourself better, but focusing that and customizing that to a single individual? So we get an idea that we constantly see, and it's a, it's a sexy term, so actually, actually it will stick a lot of different ways, is sprints. Do a one week, one day, one month sprint to make yourself 1% better. Now suddenly you have a product that you can build something around. Just giving you an idea on a way that that could work. Would you say it's similar to like climate change, for example? So like if I say I want to solve climate change, right? That's something immense, and it's like boiling the ocean, like you said last time. Yeah. Now if I focus on cleaning up plastic in the Mediterranean Sea, for example. Yeah. That's focusing on one little thing. Would you say that's similar to what we're trying to do? We need to pinpoint like that one little dot. Exactly. Because then you can say, I'm not saying I want to clean up all plastics. I'm saying I want to do this one piece. This is the this small thing, and it's still a big initiative. But suddenly, it's you can almost visualize how you can get there. And that's the that's gonna be the difficult part for your guys' project is is having somebody sit there and say. Okay, I can see what you're trying to get at here. So yeah, that's a great example. I, lo I love that example. All right, what, who, which team wants to go next? Thank you guys. Don't make me pick. Damn! There you go, I got it. I did not text you, but I thought about it. So, yeah, so like a few minutes we can talk. Okay, so my product right. my product obviously made to protect your vehicle, like the items inside your vehicle, but not only like just the items, but it's also like a whole like privacy thing, like you feel your vehicle's a safe spot for you, your items and stuff. And when someone breaks into your car, you feel violated, like you feel like a barrier has been broken that, like, and you're never going to, like, feel the same way about leaving stuff in your car or things like that. So, the main benefits that we want to give with our product is not only protecting your item, but protecting your privacy and keeping this safe space a safe space for car owners, people that use other people's cars, just anyone. So, high level, I love the buy-in that you get there. Here's why I want to do this. My, your car should be safer, your car should be a place where you feel safe. I, the term violated is powerful. So I love that, the use of that term. Now, taking the why into the what and then into some features is going to be your next challenge. Because I think that's, you know, even talking to Grace on Tuesday, was it was still very ambiguous in exactly what that looks like. Sure. So I'm going to give you the exact advice that I had to her. Okay. Are you focused inside the car or outside the car? Uh, so, outside the car. Okay, so let me let me say it slightly differently. I'm going to use the exact same thing, example I used with Grace. Um, so I, I used two examples. The first one was obviously guns are a big thing right now. Yeah. You can have your opinion on that. I'm not trying to have a political debate right now, but do you want a place where you can safely house your your concealed weapon? That, that's one thing you got to think about, right? And so now, if my car gets broken into, how does that make sure that that item is secure and safe or hidden, whatever it is to be? That's a feature, right? There. The other thing is why I mentioned the reason I mentioned inside versus out. Now you protect the stuff inside, but 
if I go into downtown Chicago, I park my car, and I come back and my car's on blocks. Did your product work? Well, yeah. It, your stuff, we were trying to keep it from getting your stuff stolen. So I think as long as the stuff is still in your car and your like, inside was protected and safe, I think the product worked then, yeah. Okay. So again, that's, that's part of the definition of this. So you've got the why. My, the inside of my car is my safe, so I want to be able to know that I can leave something in there and it'll be safe. What this product looks like, it's some type of security system or some type of safe that only I can get into it to give me a quick access. This is how it's going to work. Full well knowing that I'm focused on the inside of the car. Cool. So keep track, keep building that out. Right. You got the why, keep defining the what and that, and the, the why, the what, and the how. Okay. Cool. Any advice for? Your classmate? Okay, thank you. Thank you. You gotta set your screen when you're setting. <clears throat> or you can slide the tab to the right and it'll go onto the big yeah, screen. It's extending and like slide if you take the, take the window and just start dragging it to the right. Okay, so our general, gen, thank you. Our general goal here is to improve mental and physical being by eating healthier and providing healthy choices so that you can live the life you want to live and have a better view of yourself. Changing your life habits, like improving yourself overall. <laughs> so we're probably, not probably, we are going to provide uh, healthy and customizable options that are affordable and variations of a bunch of diets and to help you get to your desired, that is incorrect, to help cater to your desired lifestyle, I apologize. Um, there are diet friendly options and it will be information on the food you're choosing and recipes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Such as the micro and macro and carbs is going to contain on the label, but. You got a little bit of work to go on as far as how you want to present it, how a new wants to speak at what time. Mm -hmm. Content, excellent. Is my personal opinion. Why do you want to do it? Because you want to improve your mental and physical well being. How am I going to get there? Well, I'm going to give you healthy, customizable options that are affordable and basically customized to your desired lifestyle. I mean, that's exactly what we talked about, that's exactly where you guys want to go. Um, and then all the, the, the bullet points down there just continue to build that out. My one feedback here is this is 
you got to be careful with scope creep also on this one here. Because you can go a heck of a lot of different ways on this project. And from just understanding, you guys are trying to be in between. If you, this is a Venn diagram, there's the person that goes out to eat all the time and fancy meals. There's the foodie that wants to go out and buy the Hello Fresh. And then there's the person that just goes to the grocery store. You want to be in that sweet spot right in the middle there where it's good, affordable food options that people are going to enjoy it with a, with a healthy lifestyle. So that's the, the, the niche you guys are trying to play in. And so just make sure you, get, I guess I should stop there. Is that the niche you guys are trying to play in or am I, am I oversimplifying things? So think about characteristics of each of those consumers and how the, the features of your product would appeal to each of those. Because a list of 10 bullet points, if you kind of get lost in those, what three or four bullet points will get you there? Because again, your first two, the how and the what are great. Sorry, the why and the what are great. The bottom one there, just simplify a little bit. Nice job. Yeah. I, that was going to be this, the exact same thing I was going to say is like, if you remember on, on the slide, they tried to focus it as like one to three is what yeah. they had said. You know, you're, you're probably going to have more features than that, like when you start to develop the product itself. Um, but at its core, what satisfies the customer need, what satisfies his value? Okay? And, and that's really what you want to exclusively have on your value proposition. By the way, just from a mechanics standpoint, um, you know, if you have not created your graph of your BMC, the easiest way uh, to do this when you get your BMC started is just to go in your box and put like your value proposition, create a link just right to your document, versus trying to put all that information inside that box. Much easier just to click a link to it. And we'll talk about that because that will actually be a wise thing for you to do when you guys have to do mentor pitches in a little over a week. You guys have a great start today. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. How are you going to do it? Um, this is how the big companies do it. Make sure you flip it and talk about your product. Like I said, you got a little more build out to go. You're, you were so close to there. So here's why. Here's why I feel it's important. Here's how the big companies do it. I felt the pain because of it. Here's how my product's going to change things. Here's the two or three things that's going to change things, or how I'm going to differentiate. You've got a great start. Anybody else have any advice? I think it was great. Like, it was simple to the point. Absolutely. And like in your case, Zach, the, the, the trickiest part for you is always going to be because you're dealing in, some, in an area that is not maybe a familiar place for the average person, mm -hmm. is going to be able to explain it. Uh, and like that story that you used, obviously, when you do the, the value, when you did your, did your problem pitches, is a good start because if you can introduce me to a person and explain to me what they were, you know, what they experienced, what trouble they had, that's going to make it easier for me to understand that. Same thing with your value proposition. Um, you know, being able to, like, again, you want to internalize it back to your story, that will help you with, like, being able to really show how this thing will fix that problem. Does that make sense? Now that you guys have kind of thought through this, I wanted to spend a few minutes going through the coffee cup. 
So coffee cup, budget friendly drink concept if people want to go. Coffee cup is thick enough to handle the warmest of drinks, portable enough to fill the masses. Available option for a snap on the lid, paper sleeve to keep keep uh, keep busy people moving the drinks on the On so other features include fine interior, prevent cup from disintegrating, optional paper sleeve, insulate hands and prevent against rips, and paper design that fits in cup holders. So I had exactly that much space to work on from a PowerPoint. But think about how this compares to the UVP you guys are currently designing. Because when you read this before you start working on it, it doesn't mean much. Doubt you guys have had a tip set in time to work on your own. Think about how I, how I did this. Why, how, what. Very structured, very simplistic. Okay. So did you guys go through any of the science and slides at all? We we talked a little bit about it. We watched the one video. Yeah, this one here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So the gold circle. This is a concept I want to introduce to you guys. Um, the one that really hit home with me as I was reading one of his one of his books. So he talked about this very, very specifically, is the why is always at the center and the core of what you're doing. If you lose your why personally, or your company loses your why, you're going to be rudderless. You're not going to know exactly what you're doing. And you're all ultimately, at the end of the day, going to be so focused on price because you don't understand the product that you're actually delivering. Um, I'm doing a presentation in a few weeks. Is there a marker? I put that somewhere? Thank you. And That's something I want that I was asked to really beat on. Was this simple, simple formula here? And the reason behind that, the presentation I'm giving is private label versus branded products. Why does the private label have a place in the market? And the rationale is, is this right here: value equals quality over price. So if you don't have product quality, or you lose why your product has value in the market, you're going to be focused on Price. Basically, you're going to be commoditized, and it's just going to be focused on who can bring the, who can bring this idea to market cheapest. So always focus on your value by always making sure that you have a quality product that's available to the customer, because that's going to differentiate you. So again, that's the why. That's the core of what you do. The what supports the why. Again, the define. Sorry, the how supports the why. Some organizations know how they do it. It's pretty easy. Sometimes it's <laughs> difficult. Um, but there's uh, some organizations that don't fully understand how they got the business they did. And that's what I'm asking you guys to make sure you focus on is, I want to protect the customer because, sorry, I want to make sure the customers can work on a web-based server safely, and this is how I'm going to do it. Because I'm not going to be business savvy, I'm going to be the user savvy side of things. That's how I'm different than everybody else. And then the what would be all the details around it. That's your product features. So if you start with product features, going back to that value proposition over there, you're, so, you're going to be very focused on price because all you're going to be trying to do is differentiate yourself from everything else in the market. Focus on the core of you. And again, this is just a, a nice little concept or way to think about this is how does the customer going to think about this? Are they going to think about, is your product going to make the customer happy? Is it going to avoid customer pain? Is it going to bring customer jobs? Or, or make customers have less, less need for jobs? Um, or is it a game creator? Is it a product or service or a pain relief? So all these ways are different ways of thinking about how you bring value. So, this is one slide I would like you guys to focus on when you think about the why. And the other one, I'm going to click through a couple things here. Uh, is this one here. And this is basic human need. Why would somebody want to buy my product? Why do I make myself different? It's going to be what's going to fall under one of these categories. 
one of these categories? Does it relieve pain? Does it give me pleasure? Or does it deprive the service and make my life better? I'm going to stop there. That was a lot. Very philosophical. What questions does, does, does the class have with that? Sorry, does this, does this group of entrepreneurs have with that? <clears throat> elevator pitches and so when you guys go and pitch in a week or so you guys are going to be somewhere between a value process. Go ahead. Um, I was I had a question on what you think self-actualization is. Uh, what do you think it is? It's, it's the definition of what you guys are trying to do. It's trying to figure out a way to drive anything yourself improvement to yourself. And there's a whole lot of different ways to do it. Everyone has a different different viewpoint. Some people see it as very spiritual. Other people see it as physical. Other people so let's let's throw this in terms of different things. If I'm a Tibetan monk, to me, self-actualization is finding my spiritual self. If I'm a bodybuilder, self-actualization is winning the world championship. Yeah. If I am a scholar, maybe getting my PhD or my second PhD is my form of self-actualization. It's going to mean something different to every single person based on their values. Thank you. So ultimate value propositions to elevator pitches. Ultimately, a, a, an ele elevator pitch is nothing more than a more built out version of an, of an ultimate value proposition. It, it takes the some of the features and the, the three, four bullet points and starts building out or illustrating exactly what those features will do. So. Some of the best examples here. Sorry, I should start with this. An outline for a product, service, or company with respect to customers. So in your case of an ultimate value proposition, your customers are going to be the coaches that you're going to be presenting to. Or the mentors that you're going to be presenting to. And the other bullet that we probably need to make sure we clear and want to read, best for entrepreneurs, you need to convince an investor the solution is worth investing in. In the spring, what are we doing? Exactly that. So that's this is the end goal. Is you're basically building out your ultimate value proposition into an elevator pitch trying to get an investment at the end of this course. That's where you guys need to think about. How do I get take my ultimate value proposition and build out all the other details so that it's investor ready? So what I want to do is go into the ultimate pitch, which Shark Tank is probably one of the most um, reachable, it's one of the most achievable, it's one that you, that you see often if you ever go on CNN or any other, other shows that it's on. So I just want to spend some time, let's watch these. Am I going to have sound on this? It should be, yeah. Okay. But the pitch without sound is just, yeah, it's not very good. Before I start this, I want you guys to think about okay. So I got to sign in here. So when you watch these pitches, think about your ultimate value proposition, and you should be able to pick out very clearly the why, the how, and the what. Yeah, as you're watching these. So see if you can differentiate those and pull those out.
was all over the place. And growing from a small team to a larger team in a hybrid environment, we really needed one central location that we could look for. So ClickUp gave us that single source of truth to know exactly who's responsible, where we are in a project. And Hi, Sharks. I'm Aaron Krauss from Philadelphia, and I'm known as the daddy of the Scrub Daddy, the cutest but most high-tech scrubbing tool in the world. Today, I'm seeing a $100,000 investment in exchange for 10 Hi, Sharks. I'm Aaron Krauss from Philadelphia, and I'm known as the daddy of the Scrub Daddy, the cutest but most high-tech scrubbing tool in the world. Today, I'm seeking a $100,000 investment in exchange for 10% equity in the Scrub Daddy business. It's the greatest kitchen scrubbing tool I've ever used because Scrub Daddy completely changes its texture by just adjusting your water temperature. Let me show you how that works. Here we've got some hot water. Here we've got some cold water. When I immerse the Scrub Daddy in the hot and cold water, a complete transformation occurs. Now, to show you that, I've got 10 pound weights. Here, under the 10 pounds, it's soft and compressible, and that's like a sponge. That's for your general scrubbing applications. But here, check that out. It's hard and firm. That's going to be for heavy duty scrubbing applications. And we put enough gravity gravy, tomato sauce, cheese, and mustard onto a glass stove top and a stainless steel pan. Now, I'm going to take the scrub diet, and you're going to see it's just going to tack right into that burn on mess, scrubbing it right off. And remember, I'm just using water here. There's no chemicals at all, and it's going to cut right through that. It won't scratch any of your surfaces, but it will clean them beautifully. Now, scrub that is not really smiling anymore, so I'm going to put it here in the room water. And in just a couple seconds, voila, he's back to bright, fresh, and clean every time. Sharks, that's not just another smiling face. You put it on your hand, you can get to the bottom and clean the sides in one move. And that smiling mouth, that clean spoons, knives, forks, spatulas, even large serving spoons on both sides at the same time. Sharks, with your help, scrub that will be scrubbing and smiling in every kitchen in the world. Woo! Wow. Wow. Scrub Daddy. I never witnessed a live in commercial. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was incredible. Do you have samples? I just... Blown away with my idea. For the past two and a half years, I've worked with a little boy named Gibby, and um, I'm his nanny. He has Down syndrome. And because of that, he gets ear infections a lot. Um, it came time to take out that medicine dropper every time, and Gibby would go from angel to pro wrestler. I mean, he just did not like the process. So I thought to myself, there has to be a better way to do this. So I'd like to show you Emmy. This is her. You take the medicine dropper out. You suck up the right amount of medicine. Put it back in, and you would approach your kid, and you would, or the child you're watching, and you press the button. This is the saying I came up with on my own. She says one, two, three, open wide, and then she tells them a good job. And as you're doing that, you press it out their mouth, and it works every single time. I don't care what your kid hates, they will open their mouth and smile, and it will work. This is a homemade prototype, and I'd like to hand these out to you guys. But it's only for ear drops. It's no, uh, no, sir. He had ear infections, so he had to take medicine orally. Oh, it's for Good evening, Sharks. My name is Rob Dyer. I'm an active duty Marine Corps officer, and my product is Ruck Pack Combat Nutrition. I'm seeking $75,000 for 10% of my company. What is Ruck Pack? It's the world's first peak performance nutrition shop, and it was designed and tested by Spec Off Forces. Typical missions for us last up to a week or more. And the only food we have is the food we carry with us. Because of this, virtually all of us are taking some sort of supplement or energy shot. And the energy shots that are out right now suck. They suck. They boost you up, and then they bring you right down with a crash. And in that environment, lives can be lost if you're not operating at 100%. So a team of Marines created Rock Pack. We all want energy, but our snipers insist on it being caffeine-free energy. Sitting behind the sniper scope for hours is exhausting, but caffeine jitters simply aren't an option for us. Ruck Pack helps you increase your mental acuity so that we can shoot, move, and communicate faster than the enemy. So I brought some for you guys to try. I can't make it all the sir. You'll need a couple of them before you get the settings right. Like I said, we built this for the warfighter, but everyone has a battle to win. 
With your capital and our business plan, Ruckpack will help everyone win life's battles. Thank you for this incredible opportunity. I'll answer any questions you have. I got this. Say you have a pesky project. Say yes, yes. to Loctite. <laughs> Who introduced me? Well, They were awesome. They were really good. <clears throat> First guy was talking a bit fast, but I liked his pitch. I think I might actually go and get one. <laughs> I used to have a scrub daddy, and you watch these videos, and I didn't realize that there was a hot and a cold all like setting for him. And then you didn't realize that you could put your fingers in the eyes and it would do something either. So, you learn something new as you're watching these because people are trying to beat you so well. So, I mean, I understand that they're high energy. Each one of them had a slightly different, I'll say, pursuit of it. So I heard one person say that the Scrub Daddy guy was almost too, too energetic, almost spoke too fast. What about the second and third person? How did they, how did they approach the pitch? <clears throat> second person seemed to be talking a little like slow, like not as professionally as felt like. Okay. So it wasn't wasn't quite as polished. It didn't quite as polished as the other two. That's fair. What about the third one? He was a military dude, and his dialect reflected that. But should the word choice that he used, I personally wouldn't use that on a day to day, -to -day basis. <laughs> but the the one thing that he did say is it's built for the military, but made for the everyday person. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's a nice, that's a really cool little catchphrase, and I don't know if that was ad hoc or that a little slogan, but I thought that was really interesting. And the point I wanted to make on that is, you don't have to be super energetic, you don't have to be a military man, you don't have to be incredibly polished, but did each one of them have a good job of building out, building out their product, explaining what it did, and then eventually getting people interested? I'd say. And I, I would agree. And so literally, when I when I was building this deck, I went I, I googled best Shark Tank pitches, and that came up as like, oh, this is perfect. I'm just gonna throw this one in. Were you after the first five seconds? Were you guys hooked? Did you want to know exactly what the product did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So think about UVP. What we talked about is you got five seconds to get somebody hooked, and this isn't you know somebody that's coming here and sitting sitting down. These guys are. Multi-millionaire, multi-millionaires with lots and lots and lots of iron in the fire. And you literally have five seconds, and each one of those comes that. Did each one of them tell a backstory on why their product was important to them? The first two did it like right away. Um, I didn't catch the scrub daddy one until a little bit later. But. Yeah. I would agree. The Scrub Daddy one was more of like an infomercial in person. I thought that was yeah. hilarious because it's exactly what it was. And so I would almost knock that because he didn't tell us why it was important to him. He was so focused on product features, which there was a million of them he got through, but he didn't ever sit down and say why this was important or why this mattered to him. So that would be the one knock I would say in the Scrub Daddy one. Now the other piece that would are very the piece which is elevated pitches is they spent a ton of time talking about the product features, right? Each one of them had a demo or talked about what they did or had a, a physical product they were able to pass out and say, hey, this is how this applies, this is how this, this works. The other thing about an elevator pitch is slightly different than the UVP is you notice what did each and every one of them start out with? Hi, Sharks. My name is such and such. My company name is blank, and I'm asking for this much this much dollars for this percent of my company. We won't get that in UVP because the dollars are revenue right now. You guys are still trying to develop that. The point I'm trying to say is when you think about those shark tanks, that's the first thing. When you go into the shark tank, you go to the elevator, elevator pitch, and you're ready to try to sell this or get an investment in your company. That needs to be how you start it. And then you build out your why, your how. The other thing from an entrepreneurial side of things is you're not just selling your product, you're selling you. And so that's why it's so important that they each told the backstory of the product.
because when they send the backstory on why, suddenly you get insight to who this person is, why this matters to them, and what, honestly, their passions are. So a great example would be your product. I personally had this affect me. I'm passionate about this. So you build that out, suddenly you've got it. You've got, made that personal connection with that person. And to give, give you guys a little more insight, I don't know if you recognize this or not, but on Tuesday when I was walking around sitting down with each of you and you guys were telling me about your product, I did my best to try to find a way to make a personal connection with you guys. Because that automatically opens the door and makes the conversation easier. So also find a way to build in your personality into these. Because you, you don't have to be super polished. You don't have to be super energetic. You just have to be you. People want to see you. And they want to see that your product is also a version that has your personality and your stand on. So more than anything else, from a structure standpoint, introduction, body, conclusion, includes, you know, company name, products, possibly even a market segment. Hey, I'm going to be working in the in the food industry, or I'm in the I'm in the utensils industry. So people have an idea, you can kind of visualize the markets and the segments and how does it fit in everything else. Essentials, you gotta be succinct. Does anybody know what succinct means? Please you define it for me. Somebody from this table, can you guys define what succinct means? Short, to the point, but also get your point across. Think about direct. Not too wordy, you're not dancing around the fire. You're taking, you're taking the most direct steps, direct step to get there. <clears throat> Speak so your audience understands. You know, so it's an eyedropper for somebody that has Down syndrome because they hate taking that. I think everybody, in some way, stretch, they met, in some way, shape, or form, can say, I hate needles. I know somebody that hates needles. I know somebody that struggles with drops. This, this stuff tastes terrible. Suddenly, you've made that personal connection. Explain what the investor gets. What do they get personally and what does the market get from them? Finally, make it so that you, they believe in you so much and believe in your product so much that, yeah, there's irrefutable evidence that this has a place in the market. And how do you build that? How do you build that confidence not only in yourself but also in, in this product? It's going to be your problem interviews. It's going to be your solution interviews. It's going to be your reviewing your UDPs. It's going to be going through and eventually as, as the, the rest of this this uh, course project uh, works itself out, making sure all of your financials are set up in a way that says, yes, this absolutely has a place. And finally, um, explain what you're looking for. It's the big thing there. And that's what I said, you know, think about the shark tank pitch. Hi, sharks, my name is this, my company name is this, I'm asking for this. And beyond that, you start building out. Now, we don't have, to have time to go through and develop the, the elevator pitches. Um, obviously, we spent a lot of time doing UDPs, which I think is far more important at this point in time. So that's that's all I've got. I, I want to say this is a pleasure for me to be able to come in and talk to you guys. And I was sincere. If you guys have any questions, any problems, feel like you get, you're stuck, I'm a resource for you. I hope you guys realize that. Um, I'm honest, almost to a fault, and I'm willing to, willing to help you out because I think you know, each of you guys are passionate about what you're doing as well. So if you're passionate about it, know that you've got resources out there that are going to go out and help. So, thank you. So, we didn't get, I didn't really.